Hey guys, welcome to Let's Learn C++ Lesson 2.5. This lesson is going to be all about jump statements. Now, jump statements can be a little weird to learn at first, but once you once you learn them, they're really easy to remember, and the names of them just give away what they do. So, let's go ahead and get started. The first one we're going to lose you lose. Wow, first one we're going to learn. It's called the go-to statement, and basically, it's like whenever you hit this, go back to a save point that you that you hit earlier. It's like it's like a checkpoint. So, you can see we've created an integer called x, and then we have this strange thing. It says start and then a colon. This is our checkpoint. It's like a save point. It's like uh, you can't get any farther back than this first checkpoint. So if we output enter the number one, then we get some input for that. And if they say one, then we say good job. But if they don't, then we say try again. And then we have a go to statement. It says go to start. Well, our checkpoint up here is, is called start. So this obviously is going to take us back to this point in the program and it's going to restart and do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Um, it's very uh, highly recommended to not use go to statements. The reasons being um, is too much to explain in the short amount of time that I want to film this video in so there will be a link in the description of this video leading to a, a letter that someone back in 1968 wrote uh, asking for the abolishment of um, go-to statements and he, he gives reasons as to why he he thinks that they deserve to be taken out of programming languages and um, so read that if you actually want to know why but typically it's not accepted to use go-to statements but I believe that there are a few cases here and there that require the use of a go-to statement, Spe specifically in like lower-level languages, where uh, like whenever you get to like machine code or something. So uh, let's go ahead and test out how this program works. Enter the number one. We enter the number one. Like it says, it says good job. Program closes. And we we can easily see that it's going to do that. If x equals one, see how good job. Oh, by the way, I might want to tell you that. If an if statement has one line that's going to execute, then you don't need the brackets. But if it has more than one line like this one, then you need the brackets. So for this one, I can just completely take them out because uh, if x equals 1, it'll do this one. But if I take the brackets out on this, it'll do this, and then always do this no matter what. So uh, for this one, I can just take the brackets out. Now, what happens when I enter, say, 2? says try again. It goes back and has me enter again. I'll say 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 3, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 1. Good job. So as you can see, it just keeps going back and back and back and back and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until I finally hit good job and it skips the go to statement because it's in the else statement and it goes straight to the pause. And by the way, I left out my return 0 there. But that is irrelevant now since we're moving on to the next section. Continue statements. And these continue statements do exactly what it says it does. It continues, obviously. So we can see here we have a for loop declaring integer i is equal to 10. And then as long as i is greater than 0, we're going to subtract 1 from i every, every repetition. And then inside of here, we have an if statement inside of the for loop. Since this goes from here to here, we have this if statement inside. It says if i is equal to 5, then we're going to call a continue statement. And notice how I'm missing the brackets because it's only going to execute this one line. And then every time it executes, oh man, yeah, every time that the for loop loops, it'll automatically do this one as well as um, only whenever i is equal to 5. So, and then after the for loop is finished, it'll say fire. So it'll be like a countdown. For, so as we can see, when we run it, we get 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Four, three, two, one, fire. Now it it's skipped five. So what did it do here? It said whenever i was five, it called the continue statement, which means skip everything else in the loop and go back to the top and iterate it again. So basically, we're getting to this line if i equals five, continue, which means anything that follows inside the loop, which is this c out statement, skip it and go back up to the top. So we're just skipping 5. Now if I say maybe 8, if I change that to 8 and run it again, what do you think it's going to do? 
It's not going to skip 5, it's going to skip 8, obviously. And let's prove this. 10, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire. We have 5 back, but 8's missing. So, you can obviously see that the continue statement will just skip everything else inside the loop. And you can play around with that. I don't really use the continue statement that much, but uh, there are very good uses for it out there. So it's a very good thing to know. Now, the exit and so wait, wait a minute. Hang on, we're gonna do um, we're gonna do the break statement real quick. All right, so the break statement basically says everything that the that the continue statement says, except it just means stop. So. Uh, and this is going to say if i equals 8, then we're going to break from the loop. Now, if you know anything about the English language, you're going to think break away. That's going to mean get away and not do it again. So, this is just going to break away from the, the loop in its entirety and just go straight to what's after the loop. So, if we look at this, if i is equal to 8, break. 10, 9, fire. As you can see, it it didn't display anything for 8 because it skipped the C out statement and then it skipped all the rest of the repetitions and just went straight to this C out statement down here to, uh, to display fire. Now let's see if I change I back to 5 and run it again. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, fire. It skipped everything from 5 onward. So that's pretty basic as to what the break statement does. And uh, it's also used in the switch statement, so uh, so now that probably makes a little bit more sense as to why it uses that. So the last jump statement is called the exit statement. So as you can see, we have a character called again, and then we're setting up uh, a checkpoint for our go to statement, and it's going to be called play. In other words, play again, and then we're we're asking the user, do they want to play again, why or in for yes or no. And then they input that in the variable called again. And then we have an if statement. If again is equal to a capital Y or, here's the or operator that we learned. If again is equal to a capital Y or again is equal to a lowercase y. Notice how they're in the, the apostrophes. Then we're going to execute our go to loop. Or, or, bleh, not loop. Go to statement called play. So it's just going to go back up to play and it's going to play it again. It's going to do this entire section again. But if they don't enter Y or N and they enter anything else, then it's going to call the exit statement. Now the exit statement basically acts like a return statement, except it exits the program. So whatever is inside of the parentheses is what it's going to return, but it'll, it'll also exit the program. Now, I know that, that you know that the return zero normally exits the program, but that's because it's exiting the main, the main, that, sorry. It's returning to the main function. If it was returning to a different function, which we'll learn in the next lesson, is how to do functions. Uh, it, if return zero was in a different function, then it would just end the function, and it would move on to what's next in the main function. But the exit, no matter where it's at, it ends the program and returns this value so that way you can know if it's if it's a success or not or you can see which exit statement exited so say you have multiple exits and you want to know which exit was was triggered well then you put zero in this one one in the next one two in the next one three in the next one so that way you can see if the program returned three then you know that the exit statement was called at uh, exit three it's that simple it's just that simple so let's run this real quick Play again, capital Y, play again, capital Y, play again, capital Y, play again, lowercase y, lowercase y, lowercase y, lowercase y, lowercase y. So you can see that the OR function is really working. Now let's try capital N. As you can see, it just completely exited the program. That's it. Well, let's try G. It just exited the program. So just, just notice how it, it didn't even stop to do the ignore or the dot get to pause in the program. It's not like it's exiting the if-else structure. It's exiting the entire program in its entirety. So it's just skipping all of this. Now, I want you to take a look at what it's returning. 
Uh, wait a minute. Never mind. You can't actually look at that because the uh, the compiler doesn't hold it open. So uh, never mind. Uh, code blocks holds it open. So if you if you're in code blocks, you could probably test that out. Um, but anyway, that's all I have for you for jump statements. As you can see, they're very basic. Uh, they're easy to 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 comprehend once you have them in your grasp. And trust me, you're not going to forget them because you can just look at it and tell what it does. And it's really easy. And if you do happen to forget, you can just Google it. Because remember this, as a programmer, Google is your greatest asset. People forget that so much. And they, they ask the most basic questions and stuff. It's like, you could easily solve this if you just Google it. That's it. That's all it takes. I learned everything I know from Google. Everything. I haven't taken any, any programming classes ever. So, that's all I have for you for jump statements. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Let's Learn CPP. I will have more updates for you there as more videos come out. Stick with it, guys.